In 2020, the NBA and WNBA set a new standard, a standard that didn't have much to do with the actual game itself, but rather something much greater. Some called it disruption, others called it enlightenment. No matter the perspective, these athletes are determined and focused to let you know that their issues that are affecting them away from the hardwood are going to be heard. And the idea of shutting up and dribble is a thing of the past. Now, there's no going back. In August, the Milwaukee Bucks shocked the sports world when they refused to take the court for game five of their first round playoff series against the Orlando Magic. Despite the overwhelming plea for change, there has been no action. So our focus today cannot be on basketball. The boycott was in protest of the police shooting of Jacob Blake in Kenosha, Wisconsin, a town 40 miles south of the Pfizer Forum in Milwaukee. The Milwaukee Bucks protest created waves throughout the sports world. Not only did the NBA postpone the remainder of his game slated for that day, Similar gestures will follow in the MLB, NFL, and MLS. As for the NBA, it seemed that the protests and the threat of cancellation might cost the league and its players millions upon millions of dollars. With that leverage and an agreement to resume playoff games in the coming days, the players got tangible outcomes. The league promised to turn many of its arenas to voting locations and committed to forming a social justice coalition to promote voting and advocacy for criminal justice reform. One of the NBA stars using their position to affect change is New Orleans Pelicans guard Drew Holiday. We sat down with the Los Angeles native at his area home. Who did you hit up first whenever you saw that Milwaukee was going through with a boycott? Was it like your, your teammates or your agent? What was that conversation like when you initially? Honestly, it was my wife. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just her being an athlete and For us sure. watching the game. It was like, dang. Like, I wish I was there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. I, I wish I, I wish I could have, I don't know, been there to stand with him. I was proud. I was proud yeah. to be a part of the NBA, yeah. um, this brotherhood that stands up for what they believe in. As a black man in the NBA and going through the, the different things that players were fighting for as y'all were coming back into the bubble, do you think the NBA did their part in uh, not letting the game become a distraction? I think they did a great job. Yeah. Uh, that was something that kind of made me nervous too. Right. But I do feel like the NBA backed us putting us actually in those situations to express how we feel about certain situations has been awesome. Upon entering the bubble this year, Drew and his wife, Lauren Holiday, a two-time Olympic gold medalist and World Cup champion, announced that he'd be donating the remainder of his yearly salary, totaling about $5.3 million, a figure that was aimed at helping the black community. We really want to want to help business, small businesses and black owned businesses and I think to be able to um, put this initiative out there would spark something bigger. Yeah. And from what we've seen, it has. So. One of the businesses being supported by Drew and his wife, Lauren, is Compton Vegan. Right now, we're in Compton, California. We're at a community garden at my old middle school. And these are some of my plots of land. Being able to be in touch with, with the earth is a, it's a special feeling. Compton Vegan is a vegan restaurant, uh, a mobile delivery service that's serving inner cities all across LA. Our ingredients are fresh and locally grown, straight from the farm to your table. Hi. How you doing? You? Today's my sister's birthday, so. Oh, really? Yeah, we want to take some stuff back to her. Cool. Another business being supported by the holidays is Pucker Up Lemonade. I'm Carnesha Christian, co-owner of Pucker Up Lemonade Company. We're a brick and mortar lemonade stand featuring over 40 flavors of lemonade and iced tea. We're gonna need a big one of these. Yeah, that's really good. This is very important to support local black owned businesses because in today's climate, when we enter the marketplace, we already have several barriers and challenges against us. While the NBA is being celebrated for making significant strides in the bubble and bringing light to social injustices across the nation, 
a lot of the movement's energy can be largely attributed to their sisters in the WNBA, who have been vocal for years, even dating back to the league's inaugural season in 1997. Ranging from LGBTQ rights, to prison reform, to racial justice. I got on a Zoom chat with WNBA stars Renee Montgomery and Natasha Cloud, who both opted out of their 2020 season in protest of the injustices that we're witnessing around the country. It, it seems like the WNBA and your peers, you guys have always been on the forefront of social justice. What do you feel like makes the WNBA so far in the head when it comes to those uh, matters? A lot of us can relate to those issues. We can relate to being looked over. We can be, relate to being underpaid. We can relate to people thinking that we're inferior because we're women. We can relate to all of that. So when an issue pops up, we're like ready to roll. Like what's good, we're ready because we know what that feels like and we know that it's not right. I think it's just our identity. Um, when I came into the league in 2015 as a rookie, it, you're surrounded by powerful, strong-willed, intelligent women that are passionate about what they care about. And so you kind of get that torch passed on to you. It's just something we do. Yeah, our league is 80% black women, but we still have people from all different walks of life and all different morals, values, whatever it may be but we always figure out a way to come to a common ground where we can support each other in this sisterhood that we have within our league. Take me back to the first moment that it crossed your mind to opt out of the WNBA season. Yeah, that first moment was when there were protests going on in Georgia uh, for George Floyd. When I was looking out of my window, seeing you know everything going on outside and seeing how chaotic it was, I called my mom and I was like, you know, this is crazy. Like, what should I do in this moment? And, and where should I go? And should I evacuate? Like, I didn't know how to handle that situation. And she was just so calm and like, oh no, baby, it's fine. Like, that's just what people do when they don't feel heard. They make themselves felt. And she was just like, so her demeanor was just like, oh, like I've been here before. And so I started to just ask her so many different questions about like, well, well, what do you mean? And why are you talking like that? And then I just, I found out that like, she had dealt with so much in her time and never told us until my adult age of 33 now. And so just hearing that, I was just like, wow. And I, that's where I, the, the fire was lit in me. It was like, I can't even talk about basketball. I can't even motiva motivate myself to even train for basketball. I might be opting out this season. And obviously that comes with a lot of weighing my options. Uh, with being one of the providers for my family financially, that's a huge burden to either play or opt out and take zero dollars. Um, but at the end of the day, for me, is to be impactful is to be present. And that's to be on the front lines in my community and being a face and um, using my platform and the best of my ability to give back to my community. I believe before you made your official announcement to opt out, you were marching in D.C. on Juneteenth with Bradley Bill and just kind of on the front lines like you had mentioned. What was the biggest takeaway that you that you got from being out there in the street with the people and protesting and marching? The one thing that I've taken away is in this time where you can feel so small and powerless and helpless, there's so many good people out here willing to stand beside you and fight. And not only people that look like us, people from all different walks of life, different races, different religions, it gives you hope. It gives you that sense of, I'm not alone in this fight, that there's a lot of good people out here that are willing to put themselves on the line for my life. Um, so that's a beautiful thing in itself. Like I get chills just even saying it. When I first opted out, I honestly just had no idea what I wanted to do or where I wanted to go. I had just seen what was going on and I'm like, yeah, I need to, I need to try to make a, a positive imprint. And I didn't know what that was gonna look like. And then, you know, more, the More Than a Vote team hit me up and was like, hey, would you like to join our movement, what we're doing? We have a campaign going on. And they started talking about the different things that they wanted to accomplish. And I'm like, OK. So for me, it was exciting because everyone's looking for, like, you know, how do we fix these systematic problems? How do we cure racism? And, and, and I, no one can figure that out right this second. But what we can figure out with, with More Than a Vote is, all right, let's, let's open up more polling locations since we see that some places are closing polling locations and just different things of that nature where I felt like I could have an impact right now. 2020 has is, is been interesting. The general public is starting to see the humanity in athletes and do you hope that you're yeah. kind of a, a, 
a breath of fresh air when it comes to that and showing that athletes are humans too. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, if you have a Jamal Murray crying in a post-game interview because he said he has something to play for now, you know, he's talking about his shoes, the people in his shoes, and just so we're clear, the people in his shoes were Breonna Taylor and George Floyd. But for him to be crying that passionate that he feels they have something to play for, they're still playing by the way, you know, and just to tell you how powerful that is to them. And a LeBron James who, we all know him as probably the most powerful, the most influential, the, the most successful athletes on the planet. And he's on press conference talking about, I'm scared. I think if nothing else, people should now allow athletes to be these human role models and not, you know, they can still be your superheroes, but superheroes have emotions too. You have to think of it that way then.